be advised that uh, I had to mute uh, the group. So if you're on the phone, uh, you'll have to use star six to unmute yourselves. And then uh, if you're on computer, you can just use a little microphone. All right, I see that here some people have already made it out of uh, muting. So I'll begin with roll. Uh, Christian Sumano. Evelyn Ascona. Here. Charlotte McNair. Beverly Sanchez. Can you hear me, Sister Charlotte? Oh, hey, Charlotte. Sorry about that. You're, yep. Okay. Got you. Okay. John Zimmerman. Here. Sue McElligot. Carla Castaneda. Here. Michael Balvin. Ivan Adorno. Here. Nancy Coppola. Here. John Cox. One, two, Here. three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven members present of the uh, zoning board tonight. Um, I'll just double check because I think Michael may be on the call. Michael Belvin, are you there? We may have eight. Just don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Sorry, okay. I, I, I forgot okay. to unmute myself. It's all right. Thank you, Michael. Okay, so we actually have eight members in attendance tonight. Um, cool. So, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, can we have the uh, public announcement, please? Certainly. Um, there we go. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the open public meet well on the open my, my video it should be on video. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the open public meeting act have been complied with and satisfied and that the annual notice which gave sufficient notice of the time place and conduct of all public meetings. of The zoning board of adjustment of city of New Burke, eh, the city of New Brunswick has been filed with the city clerk and has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board and posted in the back vestibule of City Hall visible to the public through the windows in the lobby of City Hall, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to official newspapers at the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune and Star Ledger. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy has issued executive orders limiting the size of public gatherings of individuals until further notice. Furthermore, the CDC has issued guidelines to limit gatherings of groups. The City Zoning Board of Adjustment intends to meet on a regular schedule and meet the guidelines of the Open Public Meeting Act by utilizing teleconferencing and video systems. Public participation at public meetings has been revised, and the public may participate through a conference call-in system. The public is encouraged to call in through the system uh, through phone numbers and access codes transmitted in the above notice to the Home Ministry Bureau and Star Ledger and posted in the back vestibule of City Hall visible to the public through the windows. Board professionals will also be a will also be available do, via conference call and video during this meeting as well. All parties on the conference call will have the opportunity to hear the planning uh, zoning board of adjustment meeting during the portions of the meeting that are not open for public comment. All callers from the public will be muted and the board will not be able to hear any comment through the call system. During public comment periods, I will first read public comments issued to the board, then those on the call in lines who have interest in addressing the board will be first organized by last name and then called upon to speak. All organized members of the public speak once and for no more than five minutes in any given public meeting portion. A timer will chime at the completion of each five minute period and I will notify you that your time has expired. Public needing assistance, accessing the call in number should call the planning department at 732-745-5050. We have to salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty justice. and justice for all. Uh, minutes of the board's January 25th, 2021 meeting. All right. Um, just give me one second. I want to make sure. I have, there we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Eligible voters are Evelyn Escona, Charlotte McNair, John Zimmerman, uh, Carla Castaneda, Michael Belvin, Nancy Coppola, and John Cox. I'll make a motion to approve. This is John Zimmerman, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Christian, Zim well, no, he's not here. Uh, Evelyn Escona? Yes. Charlotte McNair? Yes. John Zimmerman? Yes. Carla Castaneda? 
Yes. Carla. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't hear a response. At least I didn't. It didn't come through on my end. Carla, can can you affirm whatever vote you yes. took? Okay. Is that a yes? All right. Yes. All right. Uh, Michael Belvin. Uh, yes. Uh, Nancy Coppola. Yes. John Cox. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, resolutions of memorialization. Uh, Fernando L. Marin, 79 May Street, Block 327, Lot 13.01, ZB-2020-15. Okay. Uh, eligible voters are Evelyn Ascona. Uh, Charlotte McNair, John Zimmerman, Carla Castaneda, Michael Belvin, and John Cox. I'll make a motion. Was that Carla? Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> Carla will second. Nice. Wait, who seconded? Carla. Carla? Just, just making sure. <laughs> All right. Evelyn Escona? Yes. Charlie McNair? Yes. John Zimmerman? Yes. Carla Castaneda? Yes. Michael Belvin? Uh, yes. John Cox? Yes. Uh, Christina Lacerda, 36 Division Street, Block 52, Lot 49, ZB 2020-16. Uh, same, uh, same eligible voters. This is John Zimmerman. I'll make a motion to approve. John Cox, I'll second. Okay. Evelyn Escona. Evelyn Escona. Yes. Charla McNair? Yes. John Zimmerman? Yes. Uh, Carla Castaneda? Yes. Michael Belvin? Uh, yes. John Cox? Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll go into the uh, public hearing. Uh, Dialysis Clinic, Inc., 235 George Street, 52 Tabernacle Way, 54 and 64 Bill Street, Block 126, Lots 3.0178.0110, ZB-2019-02, Site Plan Amendment to relocate the electrical service to the property with aerial overhead connection from the pole on Tabernacle Way to a new proposed pole with transfer transformer. The applicant also proposes one additional parking space on site, Zoning District 5-R-5A, Single and two family residential C 2B community commercial. Um, I believe this is being uh, postponed till the next meeting or till notice is made, correct? Uh, Chairman Cox, the uh, the applicant will have to re notice, uh, uh, and they are intending on uh, re noticing for next meeting, as far as I know. Uh, but that will be at their discretion to make sure the appropriate notice is done. All right. Thank you. Um, Move on to the next 96 100 Bayard Street Associates LLC 96 100 Bayard Street Block 20 Lot 6.02 ZB 2020 18. Preliminary and final site plan application with variance to demolish the existing two story building on the site and construct a new six story building. Total of 26 residential units are proposed. The existing office space and the attached four story atrium would be retained. A total of 50 parking spaces are proposed to serve the residential building and the adjoining office building, 10 of which will be reserved for the residential units. Zoning District C-4 Downtown Commercial Office, James F. Clarking III, Esquire. Uh, Mr. Clark, before you start, I just want to ask any board member if they have any conflict of interest with this application. Hearing none, uh, Mr. Clark, and go ahead. Actually, Chairman Cox, if I may, this is Dan Domingo. Oh, yeah. um, seeing as that we do not have any uh, 
conflicts, uh, and we have eight uh, members present, uh, I guess uh, as uh, alternate three, Evelyn as Skona is, uh, I guess, free to go if she wants. Is that correct, Armand? Just want to make sure I'm not overstepping my bounds here. Uh, she can certainly stay. Uh, yes. Just in case during the course of testimony, something comes up where a board member feels that they do need to uh, to be recused. Just can't vote. That's all. All right. That that was my piece. You guys can continue. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clarkin. Mr. Clarkin, you're muted. If you're on the phone, you have to press star six to unmute yourself. Mr. Clarkin, you'll have to use star six to unmute yourself if you're there on the phone. Let's see if I can help him out. Let me try a few things. Are you there, Mr. Clarkin? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Wonderful. <laughs> Wowie. All right. Good evening, Chairman Cox, board members, professional staff, board attorney, James Clarkin here from the firm of Clarkin and Vignolo for the applicant. The applicant is here this evening seeking your approval for a new six-story residential building. As the chairman noted in his introductory statement, the existing office building on the site is proposed to be demolished. For those of you who have passed by the building, any time over the past 10 years, you will know that it has been completely vacant for all those 10 years. In its current condition, the building is not readily leasable for an office use because of its age and the lack of modern amenities. Then throw in the collapsing office market and you have a property that cries out for private redevelopment. Those of you who have been on the board a number of years will recall that the applicant received prior approvals from you both in 2012 and 2016 for residential units. The 2016 approval was for a 10 story building with a total of 36 units. The applicant did not construct on either of the approvals. Um, what you have before you this evening is a total of 25 residential units, significantly less than the last approval. Applicant is also slightly increasing the number of parking spaces from 48 to 50. The two prior approvals each involved the sharing of parking spaces allocated between the 96 and 100 Bayard Street structures. 100 Bayard is also owned by this applicant. The same sharing agreement is proposed this evening. Of the 50 stalls, 10 will be totally dedicated to the residential use. Of the remaining 40, Nine of these will be available for residential use from 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. each weekday and also on the weekends. Variance relief we are requesting is a conditional use variance. Multifamily apartment buildings are permitted in the C4 downtown zone. However, we don't meet one of the conditional use criteria 
which is the required number of parking stalls. No new bulk variances are required for this project, and Mr. Bignell's planning report confirms same. Uh, I'd just like to comment for a moment on the parking variance we are requesting. Uh, Mr. Bignell's report points out that 21 spaces are required, our total, 10 totally dedicated spaces, and nine available on the evenings and weekends gives us a total of 19 stalls. We believe that's a very healthy ratio and a ratio that's actually higher than many other approvals by the board uh, over the past few years. In addition to the parking stalls, we also have both indoor and outdoor bicycle storage. Um, early on in this process, we were made aware that the city was um, sensitive to the type of tenant that the applicant hoped to attract. Uh, we are mindful uh, that the city is not interested in this area of attracting additional students. Uh, and with that in mind, you will hear testimony as to the targeted uh, tenants and the anticipated rent structure. We have four and possibly five witnesses this evening. The first is the applicant who is represented by Ari Bahar, who will briefly describe what is proposed and the market he is seeking to attract. Uh, he will be followed by our architect, Rick Perez, and then uh, Steve Parker, our engineer. We also have a professional planner, my son, James Clarkin, who will justify the variance requested. Uh, we did submit a traffic and parking report, which is required by the zone regulations. And if necessary, we have a witness available to testify on the report. Um, and that'll be up to the chair, uh, considering that what we're proposing tonight is significantly less units. Uh, you may uh, simply uh, dispense with anything further other than the report that we submitted. Mr. Chairman, that is it for the opening remarks. Unless anybody has any questions, we'll move uh, to the direct testimony. Uh, Arvin, uh, was all proper paperwork submitted and everything for this uh, applicant? I have had an opportunity to review the notices uh, and the publication of the notice, and both are in order. This board does have jurisdiction to hear the application. Thank you very much. Mr. Clark, please call your first witness. Certainly, we'll call Ari Bahar. Ari, are you on the line? He's muted. You have to unmute yourself. And he's gone. We're not. Okay. Here we go. All right, Mr. Bahar, I'll have to swear you in. Um, can you please state your name, spell your last name for the record? Arie, A R I E. Last name Bahar, B E H A R. Mr. Bahar, do you swear from to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. The floor is yours. Thank you. So, Ari, you are the owner of this property, correct? I am. And you have owned it since 2003, is that right? That's correct. All right. Uh, is the building vacant? And for how long has it been vacant? Uh, it's about uh, more than 10 years. I don't know if it's 11 or 12, but it's definitely more than 10 years. Is there any market in your estimation for older office space in downtown New Brunswick? Obviously not. There is none. Okay. Not that time. All right. You previously uh, received approval from this board uh, for as many as 36 residential units? That's correct. All right. And why were these approvals not built upon? Well, the first one, uh, we tried to build on the ex existing uh, structure as we got into the nitty gritty of the uh, you know, plan, we found out that the shell would not be strong enough to put a new structure on it. So originally we thought we can, can, we can add some steel and uh, make it stronger so we can build on top of it. Uh, as we went deeper, we found that it was not uh, possible and we came to the conclusion that we have to demolish the building. So then we went to the second approval. The second approval uh, was just too big. As we went to get into the details, you know, we, I'm a developer, but I very much depend on my professional. So when we start to look into building that, we find out that there's no way to put a crane that big to uh, construct such a big building, specifically when the wires, 
the uh, um, electrical wires were in our side of the building of the street. And in order to, uh, to put a crane there, we had to remove all the poles, which was a very, very difficult process that uh, went to nowhere. So after all that, we came to realization that the best way to build it is uh, pretty much a simple structure by hand where there's no steel, it's a concrete block and then framing uh, so we can, uh, you don't need, we don't, we are not gonna need a big, uh, large equipment on the site uh, and we can build it uh, pretty easy with framing uh, the, the building. So it, basically the problem were mostly technical. Uh, first was a plan that tried to use the building, the existing building. The second was just too big. Uh, we just couldn't make it. Uh, and okay. then now we hopefully can do it. All righty. What is the target population for this building? Well, we're looking for a professional, uh, people that associate with hospital, nurses, uh, doctors that comes in uh, to uh, the first year of uh, their training and uh, any other professional that need to go to New York City. All right, so your target population is not Rutgers students? Not at all, no. Okay, what would be the rent structure? Uh, we're building a, a very nice unit, uh, high end uh, internal and we hope to start at, uh, for one bedroom at 21, 2200. Okay, uh, how about the studio units? Uh, yeah, we, we, the, 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 the structure forces us to have some studio. So we, 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 you know, again, we try to find some uh, professional individual that uh, uh, just need the small place. And will the rent for the studio be less than the 2100 for the one bedroom? Yes, it will okay. be around 1700, 17 to 1600. All right. All right, let's address for a moment how we're gonna handle trash and recycling. So we will use a private contractor. The super on the site will bring um, the trash and the recycling into the curb and we would contact a private contractor to pick it as, uh, as as much as needed, you know, every day or every other day or whatever that we would determine that it's necessary. Uh, there is a place in the building to store the garbage and the recycling, and uh, we're gonna roll it into the side street and uh, the contractor will pick it up. And the superintendent will be someone who will live in one of the 25 units, is that correct? One of the studios, yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, that concludes his direct testimony. He's available for any questions you or the board members or professionals may have. Is there any board member or professional that has any questions for this witness? Seeing none, move on to your next witness, please, Mr. Clarkin. All right, we'll call Mr. Rick Perez, our architect. <clears throat> Mr. Perez? Yes. Yeah, can you please go on camera? Professionals need to be on camera. Yes, I have it on here. There it is. Okay. There it is. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Uh, Perez, can you please state your name, spell your last name for the record before I swear to you? Yes. Uh, first name is Ricardo. Last name is Perez, P E R E Z. Managing partner of Perez Rodosti Architects in, Cranber in East, uh, Cranberry, New Jersey. Mr. Perez, do you swear from the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Floor is yours. Mr. Perez, can you give the board the benefit of your education and experience, please? Yes, uh, I'm a graduate of uh, NGIT School of Architecture in 1992, uh, managing partner of the firm since 1993. Um, and so I've had, a, and I've been working with the firm since 1982. So collectively, I have almost 40 years experience. And you're licensed in the state of New Jersey, correct? I'm licensed in the state of New Jersey, as well as many other states and national certification as well. And have you uh, appeared and had your credentials accepted by other planning and zoning boards in the state? I have. I've appeared at dozens of planning boards throughout the state. Uh, my first time in New Brunswick. Mr. Chairman, I would offer him up as an expert in the field of architecture. We will accept him as expert in architecture. Thank you. 
Mr. Perez, did your firm prepare the elevations and floor plans which accompanied this application? Yes. And the date on your plans? August 20th, 2020. Applicant is proposing a six-story building, correct? Yes. Will there be a basement? Yes. Okay. Did you prepare a colored rendering of the building? I did. It's uh, noted as Exhibit A1 on the, uh, on the um, meeting uh, documents. And just for the record, Mr. Chairman, I want to confirm that it's part of the record uh, as it was made available in advance of the hearing. Dan, is that correct? Yeah. Correct. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Now, Rick, you are aware that this zone has certain design criteria that must be met, correct? Yes. First and foremost, is this building set back as required under the zone standard? Yes, the, yes, the zone standard requires uh, any buildings over 40 feet to start stepping back at a 10 degree angle. Uh, and you'll notice on the uh, side, on the left side elevation uh, submitted on um, SK4, uh, you'll notice there'll be a diagram there indicating compliance. Okay. All right. So both the fifth and sixth stories are set back further than the first story. First, that's four correct. Stories. That's correct. That's okay. the street daylighting. Okay. Uh, as to the particular design guidelines, one of them is that the location of the building uh, be in harmony with existing uh, area structures. Does this yes. building fit in with the other structures? Yes, well, we think it does. Is the area is uh, pretty eclectic as far as structures are concerned. Um, we have brick buildings across the street. We have stucco buildings uh, with glass. We have metal panels, and we have a uh, siding of all different types. So the building that we have here is basically a collage uh, out of respect for all the buildings around us. You'll see stucco, you'll see brick, and you'll see siding. Um, uh, and, and I think we've organized it in a pretty interesting fashion uh, to create a lot of um, you know, street curb appeal to the project. And uh, our design, okay, preserves the light and views, which the design standards encourage? That, yes, it does. It meets that criteria. Okay. And just one more in this area. Are the building materials and the fenestration, the color and textures harmonious with any of the other residential buildings in the neighborhood? Uh, I believe so, yes. Next, let's talk about the requirement concerning the facade composition. Can you please demonstrate to the board how the building complies? And would you just briefly go through the finished key legend, which is on sheet four of your plans? Yes. The design guidelines call for the buildings to have a base, and we've articulated that on the elevations with two different materials on the ground level. One of them is an aristocrat oversized masonry uh, veneer, uh, which you'll see the white color on the rendering. Uh, and the other one is uh, on the right side of that is a metal black, uh, basically just the overhang up over the door area. Um, so that's basically creating the base of the project. Um, we've established a base of four feet, mostly brick, out of and many buildings across the street that are similar in, in fashion and in scale to that four story um, setback where first sets back. Um, so the, uh, those are basically, I guess, two of the main, main features there as far as the articulation okay. of the materials. What is the uh, anticipated location of the air conditioner condenser units and compressors? All the apartments will be fed through fan coiled units, uh, either under the windows or in the walls on the side view. Um, any air conditioning compressors or air handlers or so forth would only serve the public spaces, which are the corridors and the uh, lower level areas, and they will be uh, situated on the rooftop. The roof has a, 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 about a four foot parapet, so all equipment will be screened from, from the ground. All right. Can you show the location of the electric and water meters? The electric and water meters are located on my, the electric meter will be located on the first floor plan, which is my SK1 drawing. Um, we actually have an electrical meter room uh, and that's where all the electrical meters would be situated. Directly below that ground floor level is the basement floor. And in that floor area, we have a, uh, a water and sprinkler room. And in that room, we'll have our water meters and our gas meters. Rick, how about signage? The only signage we're proposing at the building at this point will probably just be an address, the number, 96, 96 Bayard Avenue. All right, now moving through the floor plan, can you take the board through each level of the building? I can. Okay, starting at the first floor level, we have a vestibule with a mailbox uh, for the public mailboxes. 
Um, we also have a package room. Uh, the package room, we're going to reorientate the door uh, to be accessible from the vestibule so that it's accessed uh, directly from the uh, vestibule area for the postmaster. The postmat, the keys and for the doors will be um, uh, magnetic card keys, and the postmaster will have access to those two doors only. Um, uh, it's a small lobby with an elevator and a stairwell in that area, and also there's a one studio apartment on the ground level, which would be the super's apartment. We'll have windows on the ground level, and um, he'll also have access to you know the maintenance room directly below him and the trash room, since his responsibility will be to uh, primarily on a daily basis to move trash. Uh, and just to follow up on that point that Ari did earlier, um, we also have on each level, we have a small trash and recycling closet for each five apartments. Um, so the uh, super would basically collect those trash um, on a daily basis from those um, floors and bring them down to the uh, first floor level where we have a trash collection room. So that'll be a holding spot for when the delivery, um, for when the trash uh, schedule is, uh, it, it's coming up. And so it'll be coming out of that area um, uh, from the trash room on the first floor directly to the street. And how about the upper floors? Okay. okay. On the, uh, yeah, on the upper floors, we have four apartments basically face, facing the east and one facing the street. Uh, and that's per floor. The, the ones near the rear of the project are studios, and the ones towards the front are all one bedrooms as well as to the east. We have a total of 26 apartments, um, uh, 25, one, I'm sorry, um, we have uh, 21 one bedrooms and five studios. So the majority of them are okay. one bedroom apartments. Um, and that's what we what have on the ceiling height. Oh, the ahead, ceiling heights, the, yeah, I'm sorry, the ceiling heights will be a minimum of nine feet or maybe a little lower in bathroom areas for exhaust fans and so forth, maybe about eight foot six in, in bathrooms. But uh, we're gonna have minimum ceiling heights of nine feet. What kind of treatments are we using in the kitchens and bathrooms? The, 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 the bathrooms will have tile floors, tile surrounds around the, around the uh, bathtubs and showers. Uh, and, in the, and, and in the kitchens, we're gonna have um, wood cabinets with uh, some sort of laminate or, or um, stone countertops. And all the all the kitchens will be adaptable, as as are all the apartments. All right. Will the building be fully sprinklered? Yes, the building will be fully sprinklered. And we're going to have two sets of stairs and one elevator, correct? We have two sets of stairs, one elevator, and you know I didn't mention that we will be having in the lower level, in the basement uh, level, we're also going to have a small exercise room for tenant use only, and uh, and a laundry room for tenant use only. What type of light fixtures are going to be utilized? There'll be LED lights throughout. All righty. What type of exterior facade lighting is proposed? The only exterior facade lighting that we're proposing would be uh, on the overhang at the front door entrance. Will it be recessed um, uh, LED lights, bright, so we'll have a nice bright entrance. Um, and then we'll have some along the courtyard alleyway, uh, wall-mounted LED lights, just to keep that area uh, lit at night. Must be thinking the city's Department of Engineering report dated January 19 request that we consider crime prevention techniques. Um, and can we accommodate that request? Yes, absolutely. We're gonna have a list here of what we, we're gonna do to the plans, the designs to improve upon that. And uh, we're gonna start, basically, I did mention that all the recess, the recess LED lights at the entry door will be very bright. Uh, we'll have mall mounted LEDs at the courtyard. The parking lot, the parking uh, area itself will be uh, have bright LED um, ceiling mounted lights. Um, we will be adding to our construction documents vision panels at all the doors facing the parking lot so that there's always a visual flow to the parking. Um, there's also going to be uh, closed circuit TV cameras, um, which will be uh, uh, added to the existing system that's in the current parking lot. They are monitored, um, so there'll be cameras within the parking and any other unsupervised areas in the building. Um, we're also going to redesign the front emergency uh, stair door um, because it does create a hidden area. So we're going to pull that forward a little bit and change the design so that we don't have any uh, nooks and crannies for uh, any bad guys to hide out, hide out in. Um, we also have one, uh, one of the nice features I think of this design as that um, helps quite a bit to that regard is the fact that we have uh, the large glass, the doors facing the street. Um, uh, the visual is in the, the visual uh, uh, command of the street from apartments or residential areas is, 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 is very good for crime prevention. And, um, and so we have the fall, uh, the fake uh, balconies in the front. Um, they're not really gonna be accessible per se. They're only about 12 inches uh, wide or so. Um, but the, the point is to uh, have that presence on the street. Um, so, and, and all 
the doors will have card access uh, for residents only use. So I think I think those uh, six items right there um, certainly bring this building into um, much more uh, harmonious safety compliance. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that concludes his uh, testimony and he's available for any questions. Is there any member of the board or professional staff that have any questions for this witness? Hi, this is Nancy. I have a question. You sure. said there was one elevator. Um, Correct. Suppose something happens to that elevator or is that elevator also going to be used for moving as well as you know, moving in and out as well as the residents to uh, get up and down. Yes, there's, it's a small apartment, only 25 apartments, or actually only 20 above the ground level, or 25 above the ground level. Um, so one elevator is gonna be used both for a resident as well as for moving. And those will be coordinated through the superintendent for timing purposes so that a resident will have access to the elevators while people are moving. And um, they, basically they get scheduled. Thank you. Um, this is Sue McGilligan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Um, I don't know if this Hi, is Sue, the appropriate Sue, place. But... In, sorry, this is it. We, we didn't have you as present here today. Oh, I am. I have been. I said yes. I was. No, we didn't hear you. I uh, I apologize. Oh. Uh, Arvind, I, I don't know if that, that messes anything up. Just... Uh, Present. Uh, she's indicated that she's been present from the beginning of the meeting. So, all right. Uh, let me yes. just grab the roll. There it is. All right. Gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Uh -huh. Continue uh, with the session. All right. I don't know if this is the section, but um, regarding the number of parking spaces, where you're talking about the nine additional spaces that are available, as long as the residents are out of there by 7 a.m. Any, I'm just trying to figure out, and I don't know if this is the appropriate place to ask it, but where did they come up with 7 a.m. and why? Uh, I guess I can feel that one. Um, it was just something in consultation with the owner. It's not locked in stone. Um, if the board would be more comfortable uh, with an 8 a.m. Uh, or an 8.30, uh, we could do that as well. Um, so I would leave it to the board's discretion. Okay. I was just wondering if there's anything driving it. Thank you. No, nothing in particular, Sue. All right. Thanks. Any other questions from any member or, pro or professional staff? Hearing none, Mr. Clark, and please move on to your next witness. We'll call Stephen Parker, our engineer. Mr. Parker, are you there? I am here. All right. Uh, can you please state your name, spell your last name for the record? Yeah, Steve Parker, P A R K E R, uh, with Parker Engineering and Surveying. All right, Mr. Parker, can you please uh, do you swear from tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. What is yours? Thank you. Mr. Parker, have you ever been accepted by this board as an engineer in the past? Yes, I have. And uh, since then, have your credentials changed in any way? Uh, no, I've just gotten older. All right. Mr. Chairman, I would offer him up again as an expert in the field of engineering. We will accept him as an expert in engineering. Thank you. Steve, did you prepare the engineering plans which accompanied the application? Yes, I did. And the last revision date on your plans? Uh, it's actually June 24th of 2020. And let's start with what is on the site today. Uh, right now, it's a, it's a two-story, three-level building uh, with a basement. And the basement's about you know, halfway in and halfway out of the ground right now. Is this building proposed to be demolished? Yes, it is. And a six-story building is proposed in its place? That's correct. Yeah, and I think the, the, uh, Mr. Perez has described that and, and you know kind of illustrated that with his uh, uh, with his rendering that that's been submitted. Okay. Can you uh, 
go through your plans with the board, please. Yeah, sure. So when you look at um, uh, sheet number one is just the title sheet. It's got some information kind of orients the, uh, the property in the surrounding area. Uh, sheet number two shows what the existing conditions are on the site on the left hand panel. The middle panel shows what we call the layout plan. That's really where the, where the new building is going to go. When you look at the middle panel uh, of the second sheet, there's that cross hatched area. That's the location of the new building uh, and where it's going to go in relation to the rest of the site. Um, and then uh, the, the, the far right panel on sheet number two shows the uh, what we call the ground level plan kind of illustrates where the entrances are to the site, where the parking is, how that all is going to work. Um, sheet number three is a, is a lighting plan, um, includes some details for the parking areas, and then sheet four is just, you know, construction details for, um, you know, some of the work that's going to go on out there on the property. All right. The entrance for the parking is within the adjoining building at 100 Bayard, correct? Yes, that's correct. Off of Bayard Street, right. And the driveway access uh, is from Bayard? Yes, yes, it is. All right. How many parking spaces are located within both the 96 and 100 Bayard Street properties? Well, we're, we're proposing there's going to be 50 parking stalls uh, on, on, those, on those properties there. Or under those buildings. Are any there. of these... Okay, are any of these handicap spaces? There are. There's four that are proposed to be handicapped. Um, and when you look at the, uh, the on sheet number two, the right-hand panel, the ground level plan, we show two handicapped stalls um, right inside uh, the parking area uh, when a car first comes in. That provides access to the, uh, you know, close access to the, to the entrance. And then there's also going to be two um, underneath the newly constructed the, the building that's going to be constructed there's two there's two stalls uh, in the back there so there's a total of four handicapped stalls all right do we also have covered uh, bicycle rack areas we do there's two there's two areas shown when you look at um, again if you look at the right hand panel on sheet number two of the plans um, in the in the I'm gonna say the top middle section of the uh, of the parking area there. It's, it, we, we call out the bicycle rack area. It's kind of between some of the parking stalls in some in some dead space uh, where there's some support columns. There's also a bicycle rack area uh, just behind the new building, again, between some columns over there. Uh, but that's covered. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a, a it's going to be lighted for night time use and it's going to be covered as well. All righty. How are we handling stormwater management? You know, this, this is uh, right now, uh, the site is almost, you know, completely uh, covered with impervious coverage. There's actually going to be a small decrease in impervious coverage as a result of the project. Um, stormwater runoff basically just flows out into the street and into the stormwater, man stormwater system that's already there. That's going to continue the way it is. There's no, there's no stormwater management structures uh, or detention facilities because, quite frankly, it's not required. Um, but it will... Right now, the uh, the proposal is that the stormwater will continue flowing into the existing uh, drainage system. Can you go through the lighting that's being proposed? Yeah, there's 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 lighting proposed, uh, ceiling mounted lights under the building in the parking areas, um, and I think there's a request from the engineer that that be LED lighting, and so that will, if it hasn't been done yet, will be changed out. I think there are some old lights in there, or old fixtures. Uh, that may not be LED, but those will all be uh, changed out to become LED fixtures uh, underneath the parking area. That that'll provide the um, uh, the light adequate lighting for the site. Is there any landscaping proposed? You know, there's there's very little area since most of this property is already developed. That is with either parking or building. There's very little area for landscaping, and those areas that are available already have some trees in them. There's, for example, uh, just to the right of the Baird Street entrance, uh, there's an area uh, actually between the two parking areas uh, where there's a, you know, some, there's a tree in there. Uh, there's some, you know, there's, that's already landscape. And then on the, on the back part of that area along the southerly portion of the property, there's another small area where there's some trees back there as well. So there's no new landscaping proposed. Uh, there is la existing landscaping in place um, and that's gonna remain. All righty. Have you had an opportunity to review the city engineering report, which is dated January 19 of this year? Yes, I have. 
beginning beginning on page two under the category of pedestrian and vehicular movement, can we provide the stop signs and pavement markings that are being requested? Yes. Moving on to page three, there's a request to add a note that repairs directed by the city engineer will be made. Can you add that note? Absolutely, yes. Still on page three, there is a question whether or not there's adequate site triangle clearances at the points of egress. Can you address that, please? Yeah, there definitely is. This is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, Bear Street is straight right in this area. It's a, it's a low speed limit. Um, there's a traffic light right at the corner. Um, so there's, there's plenty of sight distance. And, and by the way, Bear Street is a one way street in front of the property here. Um, and there's, there's, there's more than enough uh, sight distance here. All right, further down on page three, there is a request for electric vehicle charging stations. Can we comply with that code requirement? Yes, we can. All right, there's also a request for stop bars and stop signs for each parking lot exit. Can we provide those? Yes. Moving on to page four at the bottom, there's a request to add two notes concerning stormwater management and stormwater grates. Can we add those notes? Yes, we can. Moving on to page five, can we comply with all of the requests on that page? Yes, we can. And moving on to page uh, six, uh, is the trash room that's proposed large enough in your opinion to handle these 25 residential units? Yes, it is. And I think Mr. Perez has described how that's going to work uh, with the super. And I think that, you know, if need be, they'll just schedule more frequent uh, pickups. Um, so there's, yeah, there's no doubt that, that that's large enough for the, uh, the needs here. All right, is the applicant going to have an emergency generator? Uh, yes, there will be one located on the roof. All right. Will we agree to provide a logistics plan and handle the pre-construction meeting? Yes. All right, on page seven, um, I will uh, represent to the board that there are no proposed or existing covenants or easements, Mr. Chairman. Um, moving on, there's a comment that details uh, for a site improvement need to meet the city standards. In the event we do not, uh, we will certainly revise our details, Mr. Chairman, in order to be compliant. Uh, finally, we recognize that uh, we need to provide copies of permits, letters of no interest, guarantees and escrows, as indicated uh, in the city engineer's report. Uh, at this time, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move on to Mr. Bignell's uh, February 19, 2021 report. And as we customarily do, we move on to the plan review comments, uh, which are found um, in paragraph 10. Um, we'll try and go through these quickly. Uh, we will, of course, in item A, comply and obtain all other necessary governmental approvals. Uh, item B, um, we have given uh, parking testimony. Um, item C, um, each space where residential parking signage is proposed have been identified on the plan. That's an informational item. item. Um, lighting should be shown for all parking areas. We will certainly comply. Dimensions and setbacks should be provided on the plan. That's item F and we will certainly strike that item B. Uh, we'll certainly comply with that. Uh, item F, the testimony to address the conditional use criteria will be handled by the next witness. Item G, we did furnish the color architectural elevation, the rendering. Um, item H, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is gonna be up to the board when we finish the planner's testimony as to whether or not you're gonna want testimony uh, from the actual uh, uh, traffic expert. Um, item I, uh, We've given you testimony with regard to the adequacy of the trash room and the fact that we'll increase the frequency uh, of pickups if necessary. Uh, item J is a request for street trees. That's a new uh, request and we'll certainly comply with that. Um, item K, loading, we have no loading space. Um, can a box truck maneuver into the parking area? It may, it may not. Mr. Chairman, I think we just, and board members, we just have to be realistic. There are just some times uh, that we cannot provide on-site loading 
uh, and we believe that this is one of them, and, and we hope that you agree with us. Um, there's also an email uh, that Katie Pinello sent to us with regard to comments uh, from the fire official. Uh, Steve, have you had an opportunity to review that email? Yes, I have, and we can we can comply with those requests as well. Okay. Mr. Chairman, that concludes Mr. Parker's testimony, and he's available for questioning. Any member of the board or professional staff have any questions for this witness? Mr. Chairman, this is Todd Bloodshare, if I may. Sure, Todd, please go ahead. Sure, and, and I, um, Mr. Clark and, and his witnesses have addressed almost all the comments in my report, so I don't have any other comments. I just wanted to um, um, weigh in on the on the um, the loading space. Um, you know, re realistically, we understand that the building has structured parking, so it'll be unlikely that you know a loading truck, uh, even a moving van, residential moving you know vehicle, would be able to to get in there. Um, but we just wanted to see if there was uh, realistically a place either on the street or, um, you know, I don't know where else it would be, but realistically, you know, you got 25 apartment units. Where is the moving truck that's got to park somewhere? Where, where is that going to, where is that going to park? And my main concern is really just to make sure that we're not blocking traffic on the street, wherever it's going to end up. Can I that's address this issue? As as the board... right. I'm sorry. The board satisfied with that testimony. That that's all. I just wanted to make sure that you know the, whatever the answer is, and I know it's not going to be a, a perfect, um, you know, solution. But I just want to make sure the board was was satisfied with whatever, whatever the result is. Can I address this issue, Mr. Clarkin? Certainly. All right. So there is a driveway in between the two buildings, the existing building and the building in the corner. The driveway is open to above. There is no structure above that. Uh, a regular uh, box truck. Uh, I'm not saying tra truck to trailer, but a straight box, 20 footers, uh, can pull into that parking lot. It will not be in the street. It'll be in a parking area, surface area. It might block some parking if the cars are, are there, or if it comes, we can arrange that. Well, car park will not park it at the time. Most of the time, if it's a daytime, there will be people in the office that they're assigned to those spots, and we know them. And uh, we can tell them that their moving car will come, come there, will come into this driveway, and they can load there and move uh, from there into uh, Joyce Kelmer. They can pull in from Baird into the driveway, unload, and get out at uh, uh, Joyce Kelmer. The biggest problem with the, with the box truck is because they can get underneath the building, but if they go into the driveway in between the two buildings, they can, uh, there is space for them there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments by the board or professional staff? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Clarkin, your next witness. All right. Uh, we'll we'll clock in the fourth. Mr. Clarkin, are you there? Yep. All right. Uh, can you please say your name, spell your last name for the record? James Clarkin, C L A R K I N of Foresight Planning. Okay. Mr. Clarkin, do you swear from tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. You're on. Okay. Mr. Cl Mr. Clarkin, you've appeared before this board previously, and your credentials as a licensed professional planner have been accepted? Yes, they have. And have your credentials changed in any negative way since you were last accepted? They have not. I'm still in good standing. Thank you. Have you had an opportunity to review this application, the engineering plans, and the reports from the board's professionals? Yes, I have. Have you also had an opportunity to inspect the property as well as the surrounding neighborhood? Yes. All right. Briefly, tell the board what's your understanding of what's on the subject property today. So currently, there are two structures connected to one another. Uh, uh, two-story office building connected to a four-story office building with an atrium and also a stair tower. Uh, the focus of our application tonight is on the two-story three-level building that, as was testified before, will be demolished. All right, what are the surrounding land uses? 
Uh, you actually have a good amount of mix, but mostly it's commercial buildings and office. You have some residential nearby further down the street. I believe there's a church at the corner, and then you have your city and county building in Blaustein, my alma mater is nearby. What is being proposed? So we are constructing a six-story, seven-level residential building with a basement. Structure will have a total of 26 residential units, five of which are going to be studios, and the remaining 21 will be one-bedroom apartments. Uh, it'll include several amenities as testified previously, including a fitness center and some bicycle parking and storage. Are you familiar with the city zoning ordinance and its master plan? I am. Uh, what zone is the site located within? So we are looking at the city's C4 commercial zone, and in that zone, multifamily residential is a permitted conditional use. What variance does the applicant need in order uh, to be able to perform and construct this project? Sure, a D3 variance is needed for the deviation from a specification or standard pertaining solely to the conditional use. Um, so we are requ excuse me, requesting relief for a parking deviation under the C4 conditional use requirements. That's the only thing we don't comply with under that conditional use. And the city's parking requirement calls for 107 spaces when combining the existing office building use and the proposed multifamily residential building, correct? That's correct. And as we said, we're proposing 50 spaces of which 40 will be used for the office space and 10 specifically for the apartment dwellers. And of those 40 spaces, nine are proposed to be shared at various times, correct? That is correct. All right. Um, even though the parking condition is not being met, do you as a professional planner feel the site can accommodate the proposed development? Yes, I do. Due to the unique conditions and existing parking lot on the first floor of this building, um, we're able to provide the 50 off-street parking spaces on site, where currently right now there are 48 stalls, so we're increasing by two spaces. Uh, as I said, 40 will be used for the office. The owner feels, based on his experience, that this is enough parking for the current office occupants. 10 spaces for the new family apartments, plus the nine. It was shared parking agreement where we'll install the signs that say uh, to be used by residents between the hours of 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. or uh, however long the board feels is appropriate. Uh, we'll bring us to, to a total of 19 spaces. Uh, in the board planner's report, it is noted that the resi residential site improvement standards require 21 off-street parking spaces specific to this residential building. Um, for the 26 units we're proposing. So therefore, we're only two spaces short of the requirement. Um, as the owners testified previously, we're really looking to market to urban professionals and millennials. Uh, millennials have been shown by many studies to have much lower car ownership rates than previous generations. This is due to lifestyle choices by urban professionals taking advantage of biking or walking, uh, but also really due to the changing landscape of transportation itself. Uh, with the rise of Uber and other car sharing services, it's reduced the need for car ownership and therefore off-street parking space demand. Uh, this, couple, this fact coupled with the excellent tra public transportation services that City of New Brunswick provides, um, it's my professional opinion that the 19 spaces we are providing will be sufficient and not cause any negative impacts on the site or to the city. I feel our proposed development can be accommodated on the site since the two spaces we are not providing can be absorbed by public transportation, Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, Uber, and the other transportation options. As a licensed professional planner, have you formed an opinion whether any of the goals and objectives of the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law would be furthered by granting this conditional use variance? Yes, I believe purposes E, G, and I will be furthered. What is the purpose e? that it's being furthered? Sure. So, E, we are promoting the establishment of appropriate population densities and concentrations that contribute to the neighborhood and community by providing multifamily in a central district close to other commercial and transportation services with other apartment complexes nearby that are less or equal in density than proposed. 
Purpose G is about providing sufficient space and appropriate locations for a variety of uses, including residential, recreation, commercial, uh, and open space, among others, uh, according to their environmental requirements to meet the needs of all New Jersey citizens. So I believe our project provides residential in an appropriate location that meets the needs of the state and the city's citizens. And then finally, Purpose I is about promoting a desirable visual environment through creative development techniques and good civic design. Uh, I definitely believe that this is achieved through our proposed development uh, through the architect's efforts. It's excellently designed by creating uh, you know, a structure that fits in the existing space with appropriate step backs, fenestration materials that really fit the neighborhood. Are there any goals and objectives of New Brunswick's master plan that might be furthered by granting this conditional use variance? Yes, so the board planner in his report says that our application is consistent with the city's master plan and I concur with that. The purpose of the C4 zone is to expand and preserve the integrity of the character and pedestrian scale of the downtown central business district, which serves as an urban regional center for the state. I believe that purpose is further due to the fact that multifamily residential is a conditional use in the zone. Further, the author of the zoning code clearly understood that a major urban regional center with the central business districts will have low, mid, and high rise apartment buildings to satisf satisfy the demand of the office and commercial uses. Um, as I have shown that the site can accommodate the conditional use with the parking we're providing, our application expands and preserves the pedestrian scale as well as the character of the zone. Those living in this district can take advantage of the restaurants, uh, cultural opportunities, offices, and commercial uses as the master plan and zone intends. Our project will improve the city's downtown as a key component of its economic engine, which is a goal of the master plan. All right, spend a moment, if you would, discussing the negative criteria. Sure. The positives from this development, I feel, in my professional opinion, outweigh any negatives as we are providing an upgrade to the site where the office space is not in modern demand, but modern apartment dwellings are especially in demand in the core of the city. And as previously testified, this uh, office space has been vacant for over 10 years. So. I see no negatives or detriment to the site or neighborhood, much less a substantial detriment. Um, let's keep in mind, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Uh, yeah, as with respect to substantial impairment to the city's zone and zoning ordinance, let's just keep in mind that this is a permitted use, though conditional. So in my opinion, there will be absolutely no impairment, much less a substantial impairment to the zone and zoning ordinance. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the direct testimony. He is available for any questions. Thank you. Any board member or uh, staff professionals have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, this is Sue again. And on the parking, one of the concerns I have is I understand you're looking at, you know, it's a lot of millennials. They're going to be taking the train or whatever. But with those nine parking spaces, I'm also looking at more and more people who can work from home. And even after COVID lifts, I think a lot of our employers will be looking at having people work from home maybe more than they did before. So I'm a little concerned with only nine parking spaces devoted to those 25 units. So we should clarify it's 10 uh, within the existing first floor footprint. Uh, that will be solely dedicated to residential plus nine that will be shared with the office space. So really it's a, it's a total of 19. So we're just short two. Um, right. Does that right. alleviate so your concern? Sorry, say again. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just asking if that alleviates your concern. So we're, we're proposing 19 where the 25 units call for 21 spaces. Correct, but those nine shared, if I'm working from home, I'm going to have to move my car. Or if I leave my house at 8 o'clock or 7.30, I have to move my car. So there's two things I'm concerned about. The nine shared, in my, my thought anyway, doesn't get you up to the full 19 and only too short. Um, the other thing is the hours of which they are being shared. How many people are we expected to be out of their homes before 7 o'clock to go somewhere, if indeed they are actually leaving the premises? 
If I could jump in, my comment on this would be also that the flip side of people working at home would reduce the parking demand from the offices at 100 Bayer. Uh, so I think there may be some evening out there uh, for the board to consider. And once again, we're comfortable with listening to your thoughts uh, on what the uh, hours should be uh, for those nine parking spaces. Yeah, does anyone else on the board have any concerns about the time? Uh, yeah, this is John Zimmerman. I also think seven o'clock is a little, little too early, uh, maybe 830. But I'd like to ask the uh, the owner of the property now, are the current uh, spaces all being used on the apartment or on the office building that he currently is renting down the street? That's an excellent question. Ari, can you answer it? No, no, we have, uh, we're renting some space to uh, uh, just temporarily uh, to residents from all, you know, around the neighborhood, they renting space. We have about um, 12 or four, little, maybe more of uh, resident in the area that just currently uh, renting these, um, those spaces uh, from us. Uh, we lucky that a major tenant, uh, uh, the county, they most of the people there have uh, they, the the county provide them parking, so our parking lot is uh, empty most of the time, and we are uh, able to rent it right now to residents around. Which obviously we're gonna stop doing that as soon as the building will be constructed. Right. So would it be feasible for you to provide 19 dedicated spaces to the residents? Uh, I can commit to it right now. I uh, don't have the, the, the exact, uh, we have a little, few vacancy in the building. Uh, I, I, I like to keep some space for that. I can definitely uh, provide 10 and I, I'm, I'm not concerned about the nine because uh, the nine that we, we were talking about, it's people from the county that uh, they mm -hmm. always come at the same time and live in the same time and uh, they're just an executive and they prefer to park under the building. Uh, so I know for sure that they are leave, they come and leave in the same time. It's from nine to five or from 8.30 to 4.30. Okay, so uh, would it be possible to change the hours of that uh, shared space to nine o'clock then? 8.30. 8, 8.30? Uh, yes, we can definitely do that. If the rest of the board is in agreement with that, that might be uh, of, of a little help. Hi. I agree, John. That's a good. I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. This is Nancy. No, that's right. Go ahead, Nancy. I just was agreeing with John's point. Right. But I also have the same concerns that John and Sue have because I do live downtown. And in my building, even though there are residents that and people that work at the hospital, they still have cars because right. they use their cars on weekends and other things. So I do have concerns that there's not going to be enough spaces for the residents mm -hmm. who are going to be in that building. Nancy, I, yeah, that's my concern too. I'd like to see that brought up to 15 dedicated and then the remaining four or five make the hours, let's say 8.30 till six o'clock you know, for outside, but other than that, prior to 8.30 and after six residents. But again, those primary spots, the 10 seem awful low. Ari, can you, you go, go along with 15? I don't know if I uh, can do 15, I can probably do 12. Well, this is not so much a negotiation. I know, but, I know, uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a parking, the there's a, there's a, there are some pu public parking nearby where, yeah, but, you know, but, in a lease, we can actually tell the tenant that uh, they have to find a spot there. Yeah, but do you really believe that somebody's going <laughs> to rent or take something where they're going to have to find their own parking spots during the day so that you can provide others those spots to other people i mean i think in my own opinion 
I, I don't think that I would. And I don't know that many people that would do that because they'd have to move their car. I think that the spot should be dedicated to the residents. Um, what, I, what, what I think, what I can do is that I can provide 12 spaces and I can buy three spaces at the parking to provide for the, for the uh, residential, uh, for, uh, for them to use, for, for the residential to use, or maybe some of the people in the building as well. We do own right now two spot. We just kept that we, uh, we own it for years. At, um, I think it's a, it's it's, parking uh, day. I think it's a new street, if I'm not mistaken. We have two parking right. spaces in the new street. Bay, correct? Right. We can we can buy one more spot there. Let me just share this part because since I do live down there, I you know, when somebody goes to the grocery store, etc., nobody wants to walk a block yeah. their groceries. I mean, that's why I am so um kind of insistent that the residents should have the parking because they're, they have to go to the grocery store. There's no grocery store down there anymore. So they have to go shopping. They have to, you know, nobody wants to lug those things up and down the street a block away, especially in the snow. So that's why I'm just thinking that, you know, it, I, I think you're going to hurt yourself with the rentals if you don't provide parking for the residents. Ari, what if you provided the 15 for residential and the three parking spaces and the new street deck would be available for uh, office uh, employees? Well, the problem with that is that there are people that work in this building for years and it will mean that I'll have to take a parking spots from them. The people that, uh, uh, you know, from uh, economic point of view, uh, we need to have those tenants in the in in office as well. And it basically, I would have to come to someone that parked there for many years and it might be working this building for, you know, for many years and basically tell him, hey, you know, now you have to park at the parking garage. Uh, it, it will be very hard and uh, it might cause me to lose some tenant or some upright there. Uh, we would provide 15 spots. Uh, people in the city would can park in the parking garage. It's only block away, um, and uh, uh, they will have parking spot. And and and, and you just, know we, we right. go ahead. I just need to remind you that if you do not voluntarily agree with the 15 spaces, that the board could include it as a mandatory condition of the approval. I, I don't want us to get hung up and have the entire application and the balance uh, over a couple of parking spaces. So, uh, and you know, people have to change um, their habits sometimes. So if, if your final answer is you can't dedicate more than 12, then I have to leave it to the board. Okay. Uh, if they're going to approve the application, to designate the required number of dedicated spaces. Um, I, I can't answer right now. I don't have, uh, I have to I have to look at the list of uh, who parks where. Um, some of those people are, you know, member of the prosecutors and, uh, you know, uh, assemblymen and things of that nature. Um, I, you know, I, I have to, it, it would be kind of difficult to tell them that they can't park under the building anymore. Um, I have to look at the, at the, at the list of uh, who parks where to see if I can, uh, uh, I can provide these three extra spaces under the building or next in a driveway next to the building. I don't know. I don't have this list in All front right. of me. And I'm actually out of the state. Mr. Chairman, with that in mind, I don't think we can conclude the application this evening. Well, can I ask another question? This is Nancy again. So, uh, and I understand your predicament. I really do. Um, 
would you consider doing less residential units then in order to accommodate the situation? Um, I guess I, I can, I can uh, reduce it by one. I have to talk with the architect. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how it's going to fit there, but uh, I would, I would be open to reduce it by one. Instead of eliminate one studio and having one bedroom instead of a larger bedroom, one apartment uh, in one of the floors. It, it, it just, uh, I, I really want to comply with the 15, but the nature of the people in the building, uh, and I and I know them and I know what they do. Uh, it would be, I know that it would be extremely difficult to uh, to um, ask some some of them to move out of the building, out of the parking lot. There, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, this is John Zimmerman. So uh, you said you had three or two spots right now at the new street deck. I have two. Nobody two. uses. Yes. Mr. Behar, and uh, you'd be willing to purchase one more? Yes. All right, well, uh, this is just a thought. There's a parking deck right across the street, the Wellness Center, which is just as good as parking on the premises. So if uh, if you were to get three spots in the Wellness Center and give up the ones at New Street, that might be uh, amenable to somebody instead of walking all that way up New Street, walk across the street from your building. I would do that. Second walk. I would be very happy to do that. I will provide and I'll, we will purchase the necessary spot and provide it to the tenant. In uh, the wellness or New Street, I, I'm not sure which one is closer, uh, but either one of them, I, we would do that. Whatever the board prefer me to do, I would, uh, we would purchase those spots. I'm just trying to think of a way to make it easier for everybody involved. Absolutely. No, I appreciate it very appreciate much. appreciate that, Mr. Zimmerman. So we would end up with 12 dedicated and then the three at the wellness center. This is That's a, fine with me. Uh, I'd, I'd be agreeable to that. I know what the, what the rest of the board wants to do, but that, that doesn't seem too bad. The wellness center is right across the street. So that's not a big uh, walk, but no, that's up not. to the rest of the board, obviously. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure, Arvin, please go ahead. Uh, it, it would, just so I'm clear, so what we're, uh, what the applicant is proposing is to provide 10 dedicated spots for residents at his facility and to purchase three additional spots for residents either at the uh, Wellness Center or the New Street, whichever I guess would be uh, the, the closer of the two or where it's available. Uh, there was also talk of the limited parking for residents and I'm not sure where we landed on that. I thought we landed on 12. Well, those would be 12 dedicated spots. Is that correct? 12 I, I exclusively think, for I residents. I think what we right, say is going to be 12. I, I think oh, we have on, 12. Let me see if I can start over. Ari, hold on. Okay. Let me start over. We would have 12 spaces dedicated for residential only instead of the 10. We would continue with nine that would be restricted during the hours to be determined. And we would have three spaces purchased at the wellness center. That's correct. Uh, uh, this is Sue. On those three spaces purchased, let's say at the wellness center, is that restricted times or are they dedicated to the residents? It will be dedicated to the residents. Okay, so you would have 12 spaces right on property and an additional three across the street dedicated to the residents. That's correct. Okay. Um, There's a time that will be a share. So we'll provide 24 spaces altogether. And on those restricted spaces, have we agreed that it would be like, you know, prior to 830 for residential use and after 6 p.m. for residential? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
This is uh, John Cox, Chairman. Um, Mr. Biha, um, did you did you state that right now you are renting out some of those parking spaces to residents in the area? Yes, I do. Dan, is that is that legal to do right now, or does it have to be part of the um, building you, or can he rent them out to outside people? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, renting out parking spaces is not a permitted use downtown, uh, gotcha. with the exception of uh, parking authority parking decks. That's what I, I thought. Know that we, would, all right, we will come into compliance. All right. I uh, didn't, I'm sorry. I'm, I did not know that. Oh, that's all right. I just, uh, since it was on the record, I just wanted to make sure uh, that everything was in compliance. That's all. Mr. I mean, Chairman, uh, the resolution, the resolution, if we're getting uh, an approval, uh, we could specifically indicate a condition that that practice has to stop. So it's res so it's actually, you know, evidenced in the resolution. Thank you. Um, any other members have any questions or comments or board professionals? Nope. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, Mr. By direct Thank case, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like the opportunity to sum up after uh, considering any public comments. Sure, absolutely. Um, so at this time, uh, Dan, I'm going to open it up to the public, but I know you have to read uh, your uh, statement. Um, seeing that there are not that many members of the public on the call, uh, Wanted to just open it up uh, generally to uh, to the public for five minutes per person. Uh, you'll provide me your last name, and uh, we'll create a list and then uh, go in order from there. I'll ask three times and uh, then close the uh, the public comment list before everyone gets their five minutes. So, if anyone would like to comment on this application. Uh, please state your name and I will put you on a list. Anyone at all? This is the last call. If you don't want to comment, you will not have any say on this application. Okay, seeing none, the public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. Thank you, Dan. Um... Mr. Clark, can you have anything else to say? The only thing I would say is I think we've come to a nice compromise with regard to the board's concerns with respect to the parking. Uh, and uh, I believe we've met the proofs necessary for the conditional use uh, and uh, request the board's approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any member of the board or staff have any comments before we take a vote? No. All right. Uh, do I have a motion, please? Nope. Hey, this is Katie Pinello, principal planner. Petitions. Uh, Katie, I'm so sorry. Yeah, please, That's uh, okay. I know. Um, okay, so I just wanted to go through the special conditions real quick just to make sure I have everything right. Um, I have trash pickup to be provided by a private hauler at no expense to the city. Um, there, there shall be a shared parking arrangement um, wherein nine spaces will be reserved for residential parking between 6 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. Um, the prior, appro prior approvals for the site shall be abandoned, which is um, applications uh, Zoning Board 2016-01 and Zoning Board 2012-04. Um, the applicant shall purchase three um, permits in the wellness uh, center deck for use by the residential tenants of the building. Um, and the the rented parking on the um, site shall shall cease, I guess, for lack of better better words. Does anyone have any issues or comments on those ones? Only that we've committed to fifteen dedicated space. Uh, I'm sorry, twelve. 
Yes, the 12 the dedicated on the itself. site. Yes, on the property. Okay. And then three at the wellness. Yes. Okay. So um, should the board act favorably on this application, we recommend the following conditions of approval. Um, compliance with the terms of the city engineering report dated January 19, 2021 for the project. Submission, oh, excuse me, strike that. Um, payment of a site performance bond in an amount re reviewed and approved by the city engineer. Submission of a site inspection escrow deposit for engineering inspection fees in an amount calculated pursuant to Title 16, 24, 160. Payment of all water and sewer connection fees pursuant to Titles 1304 and 1308. Issuance of a road opening permit from the city engineer if required. Um, the applicant shall schedule a pre-construction meeting with the city engineering department. Compliance with the terms of the Bignell Group uh, planning report dated February 19, 2021 20, for the project. Um, planning review escrow funded for all post-approval reviews. Um, payment of any other fees due to the city of New Brunswick related to the development or use of this project. Payment of all outstanding taxes and water sewer fees. Middlesex County Planning Board approval or waiver. Freehold Soil Conservation District approval or waiver, submission of engineering or architectural plans to comply with any changes required by the planning or engineering memos or plan amendments offered at the hearing, if any. Um, 12 residential parking spaces shall be provided on the site. Um, compliance with the city's water service system ordinance, chapter 1304, trash pickup to be provided by a private hauler at no Hello, expense to the city. Do you hear me now? There shall be a shared parking arrangement Hello. wherein nine spaces will be reserved for residential parking between uh, 6 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. Uh, it's ridiculous, you know? And, uh, hey, if, uh, Approvals for the site shall be abandoned, uh, Zoning Board 2016-01 and 2012-04. Um, three residential, or three permits shall be uh, purchased in the wellness center deck for the use by the residential uh, tenants. Um, rented parking shall cease on the property. Um, all utilities and other site improvements to be maintained by the applicant at their sole expense. All on-site utilities to be constructed underground. All temporary encroachments in the public right-of-way shall require city council approval. All construction staging shall be done on site unless an encroachment allowing that the public right-of-way is approved by city council. Streets wake up clean of sediment and debris. The applicant shall cause the streets to be cleaned if directed to do so by the director of public works. Okay. Tracking pads shall be installed at all construction exits. Replacement of damaged streets, curves, and sidewalks as per the direction of the city engineer. And the applicant is seeking preliminary and final site plan. Um, a D3 variance for conditional use yes. standards. Um, and then we also have um, parking and loading and design waivers for parking lot setback to property line location of driveway curb cut from property line um backup aisle and um i believe that is it that's all i've got thank you katie any member uh do i have a motion from a uh, board member okay hold on Consulting with the sir. Yes. Hello, I hear you. Mr. Chairman, this is Arvin. I told the board attorney. I, I think that you had asked for a motion. I'm not sure if that got lost in the in the translation. If there was a motion. This is Ivan. I'll make a motion to approve. Well, I thought I thought yeah. when I said the motion, I thought a minute. And Mr. Chairman, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Adorno made the motion and Ms. M uh, McElligot uh, seconded that motion. So it would be appropriate for roll call. Uh -huh. Dan, I think you're, um, you're muted. Aaron, I think he's on the other line. <laughs>
I think he said, hold on. So I don't know what that meant. Yeah, he did say, hold on. That's why I was waiting for, um, uh, Oh, I apologize. Oh, that's okay. We still needed to make a motion. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I just sent him a, a, a message. We aren't hearing you to him. So, but he's on the phone. It looks like so. Sorry about that. Um, technical All good, All right. Um, you can continue. All right, Dan. They, um, we did go ahead and have the motion uh, because um, Arvin said he heard it and then he didn't understand. But uh, I believe it was Ivan Adorno made the motion and Suma Gelliot second the motion. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, John Zimmerman? Yes. Sue McElligot? Yes. Carla Castaneda? Yes. Michael Belvin? Yes. Ivan Adorno? Yes. Nancy Coppola? Yes. Cox? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, board members. Have a good Congratulations. Evening. You Thank too. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Much more. Agenda is uh, discussion items. Uh, do we have anything for discussion? We do not. All right. Uh, other matters of interest to the public? Uh, once again, we'll. Uh... Open it up to the public for five minutes per person for anyone who would like to comment. Anyone at all, just give me your name and I'll put you on the list of speakers. Mr. Dominguez? Yes, it, sir. It, just in case people are calling in, if uh, if we can re-advise them that if they're Thank calling you. in, yep. they've got to hit star six. Star six if you're on your phone uh, to unmute yourself and low microphone if you're on the computer. Star six or microphone. Yeah, so this is general public comment for five minutes per person. Anyone at all? Last call. Mr. Chair, seeing none. All right, that portion is closed. And do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, this adjourn. is Nancy. Absolutely. Okay, so. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. bye.